ways you can stay connected with us here at NFC Derby. If you're currently watching us on our Facebook page, if you haven't already, you can scroll up and click on the like button. If you are over on our YouTube channel, you can scroll down and click on the subscribe button. And to be notified of when we post, you can click on the little red bell. You can also visit our website at www.anfc.org.uk. If you'd like to send us an email, you can do so at admin at anfc.org.uk. If you'd like to send us a prayer request, you can email that to I need prayer at nfc.org.uk. I just want to greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and the Saviour Jesus Christ that's worthy of all the praise and worship. We can lift our hands this morning because God is faithful. His mercies are new every single day and we can rejoice in the very fact of knowing that our Redeemer lives and that we have a hope that makes us not ashamed. I just love what Paul said and I'm not ashamed of the gospel because even the very power of God unto salvation and we just thank God this morning that we are alive you know it's the uh, uh, first week of, um, of, of March the first Sunday and time has gone really quickly you know and God has kept us and kept us alive so we can give him thanks for another day we know that it's been very hard over the last two years you know with the COVID situation and now we're faced with another dilemma in life where there is now unrest in Ukraine uh, and a nation that is experiencing devastation. But what can we do other than pray? And so we pray for the peace of Ukraine. We pray that things will chain and change and things will turn around. And we also pray for Russia, that God will touch the hearts of men, that their lives will be changed and that they will live according to the principles of God, and that is to live loving. The Bible tells us that we're supposed to love one another. So we pray peace over the nations of the world. You know, in a time like this, we can only look to God and begin to ask God to intervene by his power and by his spirits, because he is a God that hears and understands. Well, this morning, before we go into the word, I just want to let you know, Pastor Sandra and our ministry team, and they send their love and they're, and they're praying for you always, praying that you will be established in the things of God and the desires that you have, that God will grant those desires, you know, because the Bible lets us know that God uh, delights in the prosperity of his people and also wants to give us what I call a blessed and an empowered life. You know, Jesus makes it very clear that I've come that you might have life. And I know he's talking about, you know, uh, the resurrected life and I know but while we're on earth I personally believe that we can experience the blessings of God that make of one rich and has no sorrow and when I talk about the blessings of God I'm talking about peace I'm talking about love I'm talking about God working on your behalf that comforter that says I'll never leave you nor will I forsake you and even when you go through the storm when you go through the floods uh, he won't drown you because he'll make a way when it seems like there's no way because our God is a way maker. And we thank God this morning that we can live by faith, faith in the word of God. And the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. And we thank God for the established word that is forever settled. And the Bible also encouraged me and you to allow the word of God to dwell richly inside you. David puts this this way, thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. And the Bible also says, how can a young man cleanse his ways? But by taking heed to the word of God. And we're established on the word and faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. Well, this morning we're going to see what the word of God has to say, because I personally believe that God is concerned about you 
and me even in this season. So I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11 and we're going to read from verse 28 to down to 30. And it goes, Come unto me, all ye that are labored and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, as I begin to meditate on that word, I gain so much strength and so much faith that Jesus is concerned about my life. He says, come, he that is heavy laden, just come. And he says, I will give you rest for your soul. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so when we read that scripture, we've got to um, um, ask ourselves, what does Jesus actually mean here? What is this scripture actually saying to us? My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Uh, uh, uh. And Jesus also tells us, though, you know, when we're, we're burdened, he says, we must come to him. And, 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 and that's one of the things that I want to really encourage you this morning. Sometimes we go through some circumstances and we are burdened down with the weight of life and things that just 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 unsettles us as individuals give us you know we don't have that rest we don't have that peace and Jesus is saying come no matter what where, where you are in life he's saying come no matter what situation you're in he's saying come and I really personally believe that this morning that God by his spirit is speaking to somebody you might be burdened and, you know, just, just things have just got on top of you. But we have a God who cares. The Bible tells us that we have an eye priest that is touching the feelings of our infirmities. And in a season like this, we can come unto him because we know that he cares for you. And now when Jesus turns around and says, you know, he's not talking here about your, your physical burdens you're not talking about that right in this scripture he's talking about you know um the 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 the, the, the heavy burdens uh, uh, of the system of the works of the pharisees that they they laid on on the people's shoulder you know um the pharisees was this religious people and jesus was saying listen and come unto me and I'll give you rest. I'll give you relief from, uh, from this. Uh, uh, um, you see, because the religious people would place certain requirements on God's people. And I find how I found to come to a place where I've realized there are many Christians that who, who profess to have Jesus as their Lord and, and Savior and are weighed down with burdens, weighed down with religious um, legalism, um, self-righteousness, and all these rules that sometimes people have placed on you, placed on us as the body of Christ. Now, the Bible says that, you know, my people are destroyed through a lack of knowledge and one of the things that I really um, I believe in this season that God is really opening some of our eyes to see the truth of God's word because you know I've been around for a while and I've seen a lot of things and I've heard a lot of things and sometimes the, the things that I hear uh, and that sometimes sometimes comes from the pulpit, comes from different the media, especially when it has to do with Christianity and the things that I hear people trying to place on the body of Christ, certain doctrines and certain things that do not line up with the Word of God. And 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 I'm not saying I'm not professing that I am perfect. I'm not professing that I know everything. But one of the things that I I really um, have a desire for, and that is for truth, because the Bible says when you know the truth, the truth will set you 
free and who the son of man sets free is free indeed and there are many people many christians walking around with burdens many christians walking um, um, with, with in self-righteousness legalism and not free but are uh, under a yoke of bondage that 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 brings a weight and does not bring you into the freedom of uh, God and that doesn't mean that I'm not talking about a freedom where we can just live any and anyhow. The Bible tells us to stand therefore in the liberty where Christ has set us free and be not entangled in the yoke of bondage because we've been set free. But you know, I, I've listened to things over the years, and you have uh, uh, you have groups of people trying to bring you back to old covenant. You have groups of people trying to bring you back to some of the feasts and and and, and things like that, and trying to bring you under this suppression. And that we don't have to be under. And even though those things have good values, I'm not uh, I'm putting it down in that sense. But what I'm trying to say is that some of the things that have been placed on us are yokes and are causing us to be burdened even in our Christian life. Because some people don't know which way to turn. You know, I've, I've seen people all of a sudden, you know, that one minute they're, 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 they're believing this and another minute they're believing that is because watch this they are they are so burdened down with who do I believe what do I believe with certain doctrines and I just want to let you know that God desires me and you to come into a place of truth because it's the truth that will set you free so I personally believe that God wants me and you to be enlightened by his word. So we know that these um Jesus was talking about here when he says that, that my yoke is easy and my burden is 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 light. He, he, he's basically talking about the requirements that the Pharisees laid upon the shoulders of believers and certain things that they would have to uh, attain to. Uh, and sometimes we can even see that now. You know, people um, play certain things for you to attain. Uh, 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 um, salvation. They say you've got to pray this way. You've got to. You've got to. You've got to fast. You've got to do this. You've got to. You've got to. You've got to do things to please God to get God to bless you. And yes, we want to please God, but I want to let you know our works is not uh, 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 is not the 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 um, the very source that um, releases what I call salvation into our lives. That freedom. That liberation. That place of being set. Free. That only comes through the, 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 the cross and the grace of God, the unmerited favor that we don't deserve. But because of God's love, the Bible said that while we were yet sinners, Christ died so that me and you could experience what I call eternal life. So the yokes of the Pharisees that they laid upon, they were self-righteousness and legalistic law-keeping, law-keeping. I see people just... They're so confused. I'm talking about believers. You know, I hear people sometimes they say to me, just as an example this morning, do you believe we should be just baptized in Jesus' name? Or do you believe it should be the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? And and, 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 and people are a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and people are just so confused used with so many doctrines and then people start to lay things on them and say if you're not doing it this way and you're not doing it that way uh, 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 you're doing it r r wrong if you're not worshiping on this on a, on, on a sabbath and if you're not you know if you go to church on a sunday you know you don't you don't do saturday you, you know you've missed it you know and some of these things are yokes these things are uh, burdening down People, ping, people now, can I heat this? Can I do that? Can I do that? This, you see, and people are so burdened down. But I'm so glad that Jesus says, come unto me, ye that is heaven laden, and I will give you rest. And he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is um, light. Now watch this. It is, it's, um, it's, um, a lot of biblical scholars have believed that the Pharisees, watch this, they had it um over 600 regulated um, rules to keeping the Sabbath or working on, on the Sabbath brought all these things that they themselves could uh, not keep. And, 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 and we got to realize this. There is no amount of law keeping can bridge the gap between the sinful nature uh, 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 of, of man 
and God's um, holiness. There's no, there's no, there's no law keeping uh, that can bridge that gap between our sinfulness and the, and God's holiness. It, it, it takes somebody to stand in the gap for us, and so that's why we thank and we celebrate Jesus Christ because He stood in the gap. He is that ultimate offering that was offered for me and you and have settled uh, uh, settled the price that uh, paid the cost uh, 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 and the Bible lets us know that you know that Jesus died so that we could have eternal life praise the name of the Lord because the Bible said that he that has the son has life and you know and, and so the the yokes that sometimes are placed on people uh, are sometimes it's a yoke trying to of self-righteousness trying to get the hand of God to move based upon your righteousness based on legalism based upon your works uh, and but the Bible also reminds us that you know God uses the mouth of the prophet Isaiah to turn around and says you know uh, uh, um, that, that the righteousness of your deeds uh, uh, is like a polluted garment or filthy rags, you know. So, that, that, so whatever we think we can uh, offer to God is as filthy rags, you see, because we cannot gain what I call salvation through works. We can't gain it through uh, these religious laws that have been placed upon it. It comes through faith in Jesus Christ and what He has done. On the cross, the ultimate sacrifice that has paid the sins once and for all and settled it. Hallelujah. That's a time to give God praise. Hallelujah. Even Paul tells the Romans that no one will be declared righteous uh, in his own sight by observing the law. I'm going to say it again. Um, Paul tells the Romans that no one will be declared righteous in his own sight by observing the law. Now, this is taken from Romans chapter 3 verse 20 and let's just read for therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight for by the law is the knowledge of sin it's saying that no flesh will be justified by the law justified by these yokes justified by these things and whatever those things are for you because i know you know we have different people from different camps that 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 adhere to certain things and, and, and they're not biblical then you know they're just more of a weight and what i want to have is the yoke of jesus to so take my yoke and my burden is light. It says, learn of me. Uh, you know, when we begin to learn of him, you know, he said, he will give us rest for our soul, rest for our mindset, rest in our emotions. You know, um, one of the things that I realize is that, you know, the peace of God that passes all understanding, when you know that you know, and I personally believe that God wants me and you to know, watch this, uh, and the real purpose of the cross, he wants us to know the effects of, Amen. Of the, what the cross uh, 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 has done for me through the life of Jesus, the one that died on the cross, so that we could experience what I call eternal, eternal life. The, I said it earlier. The Bible says, "Stand therefore in the liberty where Christ has made you or set you free." Amen. Who the Son of Man sets free is free in. Deed. So we know that uh, uh, you cannot be justified by the law. Uh, 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 no flesh shall be uh, justified. Uh, uh, it takes, watch this, it takes the Christ, the Christ life, that, 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 that sacrificial life. It takes the, the what I call the blood of the, the lamb, that, that new covenant that we have been brought into uh, by Christ Jesus. The Bible says that we was once alienated from the commonwealth. But we're made now by the blood of Jesus Christ. We're brought into fellowship uh, because of a sacrificial life of Jesus Christ that died on the, the cross. And so there is good news this morning. The good news is that God wants to give you rest. He says, come and I will give 
you rest. I don't know what you're toiling with. I don't know what is battling in your mind and in your soul. But all I know that God wants me and you to experience rest. And that's what Jesus said. Come unto me and I will give you rest. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Hallelujah. I'm going to say it again. He says, come unto me and he will give you rest. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Hallelujah. So trying to earn um, your way into heaven uh, uh, is an oppressive yoke. I'm going to say it again. Trying to earn yourself um, um, or brownie points to get to heaven is a yoke. It's self-righteousness. It's legalism. Um, but Jesus encourages us to take his yoke. So we've got to look at, you know, his yoke. And by doing this, we'll find what we call rest for the soul. The yoke of Jesus is light and it's easy to carry because it's the yoke. Watch this. It's the yoke of repentance and faith and following, amen, with a commitment, amen, to follow the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, trusting him. And giving him your life. The yoke of Jesus Christ comes through repentance. The yoke of repentance and faith. Following him. Amen. Committing your life into his hand. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the, that's the yoke that we're talking about. The yoke of repentance. The yoke of faith. And I like it where John tells us in 1 John chapter 5 verse 3, and it reads this, John says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous or burdensome. His command is not grievous or burdensome. You know, so that, that there's, there's not a burden in serving God. Some people, it, it seems like they struggle to be a Christian. Why are you struggling? It's because there's yokes upon you. You see, the Bible lets us know that, watch this, that, that we can put on the full armor of God, that we are covered. And so even when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. And the Bible lets us know that the, the weapons of our warfare is not carnal, but it's mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing in to every force unto the obedience of Christ. Uh, 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 so again, you know, all we have to do is put on the, 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 the armor so we can stand against the, the, the wiles of the devil. The Bible tells us, you know, that we can have the breastplate of righteousness on. We can have our loins girded with the truth. Amen. Our feet shut with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We can have the shield of faith that we can quench the fiery darts of the enemy. We can have the element of salvation, a sound mind. The Bible tells us that we can have, watch this, the mind of Christ. And how does that begin to happen? Amen. There's many things that can help us. I personally believe I'm praying, studying, reading the word, yielding ourselves and being also be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And also we've got what we call the sword of the spirit where we can execute, watch this, Amen. Righteous judgment in a situation. And the Bible says at the entrance of God's word, there is a light. Hallelujah. There is a light. So our Christian salvation, yes, we will experience times of, of, of trials. But the Bible even lets us know that Jesus, God said that he will not allow you to be tempted. Where that, that, that is more than what you can angle. You see, if God is for you, then who can be against you. And when you walk in this revelation of knowing that God is for you, and the Bible says that the steps of a good man or woman is ordered by the Lord, watch this, we should be able to rejoice even when that enemy is coming in. We can be at the place of rejoicing because we can, because we have what we call eternal life and we have a hope that makes us not a shame. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Hallelujah. You might think to yourself this morning, well, when I think about the yoke of Jesus and then I think about the 
the yoke of the of the law, the religious Pharisees, laws that they would place on people, you, you'd think, well, you know, they're, they're, uh, 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 there's no difference between, uh, between uh, the commandments of Jesus and that which the, 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 the Jewish law. And, 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 and because the God of heaven is, 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 is responsible for both. Uh, uh, and, 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 and technically you are right. But we might even say Jesus is even more difficult in, in based on the mosaic law in the Sermon on the Mount. You know, when Jesus begins to, to preach that Sermon on the Mount, it goes above and beyond uh, uh, a mere outward um, expression of the law of doing things, but it, co- it, it it begins to deal with what we call the inner person, the inner person. So you might say it's more difficult uh, um, to, to, to do that. But I just want to let you know that um, Jesus said that my, my, my burden, watch this, and my yoke, watch this, is easy, it's, it's light. Uh, 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 and you see, and the reason why we can stand in that position and we can de- uh, um, um, live according to what Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my, my burden is light, is, is knowing that Jesus watched this actively, uh, um, um, was obedient to the cross, uh, even the death at the cross. Uh, 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 and he, he perfectly fulfilled the law of God. He was that ultimate sacrifice uh, um, and, he, and, and, and he, didn't, he knew no sin. Uh, 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 he knew no sin. He was perfect in all his way. And he stood in the gap for me and you. And he has carried our burdens to the cross. In fact, we should have been carrying those burdens, but he carried those burdens to the cross. The Bible says, blotting out the unwriting of audience, which was contrary to us, Christ took it and nailed it to the cross hallelujah and so we don't longer have to be burdened with anything you see we cannot we cannot gain salvation by our works we cannot gain salvation by our self righteousness and that doesn't mean that we shouldn't uh, we should work for the lord no 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 you see your salvation is not based on work our works that we do for Christ amen or for God is just to say that I love you and I appreciate you you know I'm gonna do the right thing I'm gonna evangelize I'm gonna uh, spread the love of, of 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 God but you know his perfection has been applied his perfection has been applied or imputed to me and you through faith I'm gonna say it again is Perfection has been imputed to me and you through faith. I love this. Just as his righteousness was exchanged for our sins on the cross, his righteousness was exchanged for our sins at the cross. And I love this from um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Let's just read that. I'm going to say it again. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In him we live and move and have our beings. Like I said, we were supposed to carry burdens but he took on our burdens he took upon him our sins our rebelliousness and became the ultimate sacrifice and because of that his righteousness is now imputed to inside me and you not because of any good that we have done but because he was perfect because he stood in the gap he fulfilled the very purpose of God redeeming me and you from the curse of the law, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon Christ Jesus. So what am I really trying to say this morning to those that are carrying unnecessary things, those that are uh, are yoked with some religious concepts, some religious uh, uh, um, 
and practices that does not bring what I call peace, does not bring what I call a, 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 a way of living uh, in the fullness and in the joy of God. And, and your, your, your Christian life has now become burdensome. Your, your, the yoke around your neck is, is become so heavy. Uh, and now you're, you know, you're, 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 being, you're feeling, I can't make it. You know why? It's because you're yoked with things, you're yoked with the pharisaical things of this um, uh, generation, of things that people have placed on you. I'd go to as far as saying there's yokes that people have placed on people. If you don't give this certain amount of money, you're not going to have this breakthrough. If you don't listen to this particular person, this prophet, this kind of teaching. And so people are so confused and not realizing, watch this, that there is a liberty in Christ Jesus. There is freedom and his yoke is easy and his burden is light and so we're so suppressed and so we're not enjoying our salvation we're not enjoying the God that said let there be light we're not got experiencing that joy that power amen of the Holy Spirit working and conforming you to the very image of the beloved son of God and you're toiling and trying and trying to please this and trying to fix certain things uh, your ways and you're trying to have um, victory, you know, so you buy um, books and there's nothing wrong with books, seven steps to victory and somebody tells you this way and somebody tells you that way and you're getting confused. Well, I want to settle it this morning by letting you know that there is a freedom and yes, you have to adhere to the word. Yes, you have to study the word. Yes, you have to know the word because the word sets you free and we live, watch this, by the word of the Lord and we live by faith and faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. I, I just love the story when Jesus meets the woman you know, at the well and she, you know, Jesus, you know, brings the, the word to her and realizes that, you know, she, she, she's been through uh, um, 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 different relationships, you know, or Jesus didn't condemn her. You know, we know that um, he tells her, you know, we know that he, he ministers life and he says, you know, if you keep on drinking of that water, you're going to thirst again. Well, some of you are thirsting because you're drinking of the wrong water. You're not drinking from the very source of life. And that is Jesus Christ. The Bible lets us know that they that sat in great in darkness, when they saw Jesus, they beheld the light. I also love the story about when you know the very woman that was caught in the act of adultery, you know, and you know they were trying to trick Jesus, and he said, you know, Moses said, you know, I, 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 you know, uh, we should stone such a one, but Jesus, what do you 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 say? We know that the Bible lets us know Jesus, you know. Bends down, starts to write some things, and he says, "You know, uh, uh, um, uh, those who are without sin to cast the first stone." He gets up and he looks at they've all disappeared, and he says, "Where are thou accusers? You know, and they've all run." And he doesn't accuse her, he doesn't condemn her, he tells her to go her way and sin no more. But he doesn't place all these heaviness. Honey, there is a freedom in God, and your life is being transformed from glory to glory by the Spirit of the living God, because it's not by mind, it's not by power, but it's by His Spirit. And I want to say this morning to you that you just need to know how to learn to relax, amen, in the God of your salvation and enjoy, amen, the fruits, amen, of the Spirit. Enjoy the things that God, amen, by His Son has purchased for you so you can experience God in your everyday life, making a way, because He is a a way maker. Uh, again, you know, one of the yokes we see, again, that, that is entangling the body of Christ is what I call sometimes, you know, it's just the abuse, the abuse of the gifts, the abuse of the gifts of the Spirit, the abuse of prophecy, not no integrity. Uh, and, you know, I, I heard somebody say it the other day, and I, I look at it this way, you know, um, you know, we know that there's, there's, there's these different... Um, 
um, um, groups of people that don't believe, you know, in the prophetic, don't believe in prophets, so they don't believe in apostles, so they don't believe in, uh, 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 in, 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 in the fivefold ministry. And let me just point this out just as a record that the apostles today are not like the apostles of the Old Testament. We do not set order or build foundation. That is already done. That's for another day. Uh, 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 but I just thought I'd just throw, throw, uh, um, throw, uh, throw, throw that in because now we have all these apostolic uh, movements that are trying to say that they are the kind of foundation for today and all these kind of things. Not so. An apostle is just a sent person, a missionary to nations, a missionary, I'm going to say it again, to nations. Uh, 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 oh. Amen. I'm going to stop there. Amen. So we can rejoice. Watch this. Knowing, amen, that Jesus Christ, amen, who knew no sin, uh, 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 he, he took upon him, uh, uh, on him uh, um, himself and carried our sins uh, uh, and, and that we are made righteous in God, in him, because of what Jesus did on the cross. And so, like I said, the yoke is of Christ is repentance and faith and a commitment to him. Meaning that I surrender my life to Jesus. Our obedience is in connecting in what I call spiritual worship. And that is taken from in the very fact of from Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It turns around and says, Look, I beseech you therefore, by brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And verse 2 goes, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. So we have to just come to a place of what we call repentance and faith and a commitment to him and beginning to yield ourselves in what I call spiritual worship because our bodies is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And when we yield to God and we make that commitment, there is what I call a download of the Spirit of God into our lives, the Holy Spirit that begins to work on mine in your heart. That we are then conformed to that image because you see, he's working things out by his Spirit in mind in your life. Through the word of God. And the Bible says, how do we cleanse our ways? Is by taking heed. The Bible says that, or I should say, how does a young man cleanse his ways? Well, by taking heed to the word of God. And God doesn't want me and you to live in this place. Watch this, of burdensome. The, the price has already been paid. It has already been settled. The work has finished. The cross has done whatever it needs to do. The gospel has already been declared. The good news of hope. Hallelujah. The foundation has already been laid. Hallelujah. And we have the epistles, the gospel. We have everything that we need. We don't, it's not a new revelation for the church. We have what? We need because God, by his wisdom and by his power, all scriptures are profitable for me and you. Watch this. And the Bible lets us know it's about what the word has already declared. Because the Bible says that the word of the Lord is forever settled. And so my word of encouragement to you this morning is my yoke is easy, my burden is light. It's a learn of me, be transformed in the renewing of your mind. He said, Take my yoke, you see, because he said, My burden is light. And he said, And then I will give you rest, meaning that you will not be confused, you will not be tossed around with every wind of doctrine. 
Because the Bible tells us, you know, that there are those who have those hitching ears. There are people who are going around trying to deceive and trying to bring you into bondage. But I want to let you know, hallelujah, the simplicity of the gospel message. Yes, there is a sacrifice life that you have to live. But it's not a burdensome life. It's a joyful life. That's why the Bible says in everything that we should give God thanks and praise. And again I say rejoice. We have something to rejoice about because he has paid the price. And released us from the heavy burdens that people, religious organizations wants to lay on you. And this morning I want you to hear me by the spirit of God. Or by the word of God. God wants you to grow and God wants you to be healthy as a Christian, a solid, rooted, grounded person in his word, standing therefore in the liberty where Christ has set you free to the very point where the Jesus, the word of God tells us the, the temptation that comes your way, you're more than able. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than what we ask or think according to the power that is at work with inside you. See, because there's a work inside you. He that has started the good work inside you will finish it, will perform it, will bring it to a place of completion that, guess what, you will stand. Bible says we should set our affection on things above and not things on the earth. He wants us to see what heaven has said and declared. It is finished. We are now seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Paul says it's not I that lives, but it's the Christ that lives with inside me. I want to encourage you this morning. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his mind, the power of his word, the declaration of God's word, that he said that I have come, that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. And for those this morning that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and you're yoked with life's burdens, life throws things at you. You might be in a place just that you can't see no way out. Burdened down with just the cares of this world. You might have a yoke around your neck of some addiction, alcohol or a drug addiction. Addicted to something that is not good for you that is destroying you and it's become a weight over your on your life jesus says my yoke is easy and my burden is light he says learn of me he says he'll give you rest rest to the soul rest to the emotions rest to your mindset a peace that passes all understanding. You can experience that same yoke. And it comes through repentance and faith. And a commitment to Jesus. Making him Lord of your life. Because he has already paid the price. He died while we were yet sinners. So I'm going to challenge you this morning. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can simply say this word of prayer and if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and you want to start this journey, I want you to follow me in prayer. You may have never prayed before. I just want you to repeat the words after me and mean them from the heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. 
I acknowledge that you are the saviour of the world. That you paid the price by dying on the cross. And that on the third day you arose. And because of the risen life, I now can experience that victorious life based upon what happened at the cross. So I ask you in the name of Jesus, Father, to forgive me of my sins. And I ask you for your presence of your Holy Spirit in my life as I believe by faith and I make this commitment to you today, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you've said that prayer, a simple prayer and belief, your life from this moment has changed. And so what do you do next? I want to encourage you to get connected For those that are in the Derby area, our church, we are here for you. There are many great churches in our city. And for those that are living in different parts of, the, um, of England, still connect with us. We can find you a church if you don't know any churches. And those around the world, we can connect you to a church. So our information is going to come up on the screen. And we'd love to hear from you. We'd love you to connect with us. So by sending us an email, you can go, you know, on our website. You know, there's, there's an opportunity there that you can send in a prayer request. And we'll be praying for you. And we can send you some material to help you along the way because now you do not have the yoke of heaviness on you of bondage but you are now in a place of liberty with Christ Jesus so I want to thank you this morning for tuning in I pray that this word will encourage you and I pray also that you will send this word uh, 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 and let a friend know about this message this morning somebody that you know might be just battling with burdens, battling with legalism, battling with self-righteousness and those that don't know Jesus, I encourage you to send this on. Let somebody know. And we thank you again for tuning in this morning. At this moment in time, it's a time where we have the privilege of donating and giving to what I call into the kingdom of God. You know, by your giving, you help us to do what we're called to do. To be more effective, to be able to run our church and do the things that is a blessing to lives. And we personally believe that God is doing great things around the world through the churches. So we're asking you this morning, if you'd like to donate to our ministry, the information will come up on the screens on the different ways you can donate our bank account and through a hap and different ways we really appreciate your your donations your giving we appreciate that you made a sacrifice that you'll give and we thank god for you for those that have been faithful our nfc family that have been faithful in giving and supporting the work of the lord we really appreciate you and thank you and thank you again but i'm going to say a word of prayer um, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just give you honor and we give you praise. We thank you for your people. I thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord, as your people donate to the ministry. I pray, Heavenly Father, it's not a way of gaining salvation, but Father, it's just a way of saying that we love you. And as they give, Heavenly Father, and they respond to donating i pray god that you will bless them and that you will keep them and lord that your face and your goodness will shine down upon them and father whatever their needs are i pray
pray, God, as I stand with them by faith, that you will just begin to meet their needs according to your riches in glory. I pray that you'll bless them and bless their families as they give. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you once again. Like I said, the information um, is on the screen on how you can donate and also share the word this morning. God bless you. See you again in Jesus' name. Amen. You can donate to ANFC Church in your local currency quickly and securely by our website or direct bank transfer. You can also make quick and secure donations through our website by visiting www.anfc.org.uk forward slash donate. All you have to do is select the transaction partner you would like to use, Tithely or PayPal, and then follow the instructions on screen to complete your transaction. Want to set up a recurring gift? You can do this and set the frequency during the process of your transaction. Want to pay by bank transfer or set up a standing order? You can also find these details on our website to set up your transaction. Sort code 601517 Account number 8510145512 Thank you for your generosity and God bless you.